This episode is brought to you by Global X. Since 2008, Global X ETFs has been committed to empowering investors with unexplored intelligent solutions. Global X specializes in exchange traded funds that offer exposure to the artificial intelligence ecosystem, including themes like data centers, robotics, semiconductors, and cloud computing. To learn more about Global X's entire suite of ETFs, from covered calls, fixed income, emerging markets, and more, visit globalxetfs.com. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And, folks, the number to reach me live right now is 646-720-0635 with days to go. Tonight, former President Donald Trump campaigning in the battleground state of Georgia. A warm welcome this evening at a rally by the conservative PAC Turning Point USA in Duluth. And his rival, Vice President Kamala Harris, did a CNN town hall event in the Blue Wall State of Pennsylvania with Anderson Cooper. Is there something you can point to in your life, political life or in your life in the last four years that you think is a mistake that you have learned from? I mean, I've I, I've made many mistakes. Um and they range from, you know, <laughs> if you've ever parented a child, you know, you make lots of mistakes, too. Um, in my role as vice president, I mean, I've probably worked very hard at making sure that um, I am well versed on issues. And um, I think that is very important. It's a mistake not to be well versed on an issue and feel compelled to answer a question. What is so funny just days ago in the uh, presidential race what is so funny in terms of answering the question but that's the type of night that it was for kamala harris the same old same old nothing to stand out and plenty of her word salad oh dominic you're not being fair to the vice president yes i am it's not just me stating that david axelrod you know, Axelrod, the CNN political analyst and former Obama campaign manager, that David Axelrod, he says Kamala Harris went to world, let me get this right here, word salad city, word salad city during parts of the CNN town hall. Axelrod, not me, Axelrod says it was a missed opportunity. Adding, he's concerned with Harris's tendency to ramble when she doesn't want to answer a question. Remember, folks, put this in perspective. It was David Axelrod that was nibbling at Joe Biden for weeks. And then all of a sudden, Biden was done. So now Axelrod, Obama's guy, is offering the same criticism of Kamala Harris. So David Axelrod says the things that, and I'm quoting here, that would concern me is when she doesn't want to answer a question, her habit is to kind of go to word salad city. He said one example was on Israel. Cooper, Anderson Cooper asked a direct question. Would you be stronger on Israel than Trump? And according to Axelrod, there was a seven minute answer, but none of it related to the question he was asking. Axelrod also arguing that Kamala Harris missed an opportunity when asked about immigration. So some good poll news right now for Trump. He is surging ahead of Kamala Harris as 52% of voters approve of the former president's time in office. This is according to a new poll. 
Trump has surged ahead of Kamala Harris by two points as 52% of voters now approve of his past job as president while his Democratic opponent's favorability rating took a hit. A hit. That is, according to this uh, new poll, so Trump took a slight 47-45 edge over Harris in a Wall Street Journal poll. That's a four-point swing from an August survey in which she had a slight advantage over the 45th president. Now, the poll is within the margin of error. The town hall with CNN, I want you to listen to this, as Anderson Cooper cuts off, cuts off Kamala Harris after she went on a three-minute rant, a rant about what she would do about the economy. I bring a whole set of different experiences to this job and the way I think about some, it than, some, than Joe Biden. Some voters, though, might ask, you've been in the White House for, for four years, you were vice president, not the president, but... Why wasn't any of that done for the last four years? Well, there was a lot that was done, but there's more to do, Anderson. And, and I'm pointing out things that need to be done that haven't been done, but need to be done. And I'm not going to shy away from saying, hey, these are still problems that we need to fix. Wow. Much ado about nothing in terms of that response. In a moment, I'm going to Dave in Pennsylvania. But first... I want you to hear this new commercial that Team Trump has out, and it is quite effective. I just ask one simple question. Why didn't she do it? Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? Because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in things like we're not going to frack. We're not going to take fossil fuel. Did you ban offshore drilling? Yes. There's no question I'm in favor of banning frack. Things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. The worst vice president in the history of our country. New Trump ad. Let's begin with your telephone calls this morning. 646-720-0635. Dave in Pennsylvania. Dave, what's going on? What's on your mind? Hey, Dominic, at this current time, when it comes to taking calls, you are the GOAT. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say, Dave. Thank you. No problem. Now, I heard in a sound clip Harris blame price gouging for the cost of things. In other words, it's the greedy corporations and the greedy grocery people that are responsible through price gouging. So my question is this. If that is the case, then why is it that so many businesses are going out of business? Do they like shooting themselves in the face like this? You know what, Dave? That was going to be exactly my response to you because you're correct. And it does amount to if you buy that argument, these companies would be, in your words, shooting themselves in the face i guess when you've been the vice president for three and a half years and prices are astronomical what what else are you going to say what what's the comeback line uh, between harris and biden and all these other characters the lies that they tell just are astonishing at this point it's just absolutely astonishing i mean i don't even have I don't even have words to uh, I'm at a loss for words. It's just amazing. How in, in Pennsylvania, in terms of your gut, Dave, uh, honest assessment, how do you think the race is looking? Who's going to win Pennsylvania? Oh, man, I hope it's Trump. Well, you know, occasionally I take a, a ride through the countryside and I am hardly seeing any Harris signs, but I'm seeing. Sometimes when I go out, it can be like a five or six to one ratio of lawn signs in favor of Trump. But uh, 
who knows? Right. It's going to be uh, quite, quite interesting. Uh, you know, Trump has spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Harris has spent a lot of time uh, in your state. Uh, no matter what, I'm telling you, Dave, it appears to me that Trump is going to win this election hands down. Thank you so much for the uh, call. You can reach me right now live, folks, at 646 646- Seven two zero zero six three five. We have a number of lines open, and I I've heard the complaints. We've heard the complaints that you've made about the calls always being very busy to get through to me. So at this moment, we do have a couple of lines open. At this moment, that could change within seconds. Let's go to Ilona in Westchester County. Ilona, what's on your mind? So Dominic, you're like the best. So oh, thank you. So That's would- very kind of you to say. Oh, my God, my heart goes with you. You're so awesome. And, and I tell my friends to listen to you. So oh, anyway, thank so, you. No, I mean it. And Barbara today, she, oh, she got me so mad. You know, she had nothing to say, so she brought up dogs and cats. And, and as we know, there was a meeting with people, and they absolutely did report this. They but did. The people in, yeah, and the people at the meeting, the big chief, of course, they come and they lie. So I want to say to Barbara and Russ, uh, happy Halloween to the witch and to the devil. Is that okay to say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's as what, a matter yeah. of fact, as a matter of fact, Ilona, say it again, please. Yes. Barbara. Okay. You're such a nincompoop. But Halloween is coming. That's your favorite holiday, I think. And Russ, too, who's off his rocker. The witch is Barbara. The devil is Russ. And you both should go out trigger treating. Okay. Go together. I love right? it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Ilona. I absolutely love it. (laughs) Let's let's go to uh, Ina, I believe. Line two in Manhattan. What's on your mind? Uh, You got. You gotta ignore. You gotta ignore. Okay. You gotta. Don't pay attention to the radio. Okay, Ina. You have to listen to the phone. If you listen to the radio when I go to you, there'll be a delay and you won't be able to hear me. Go ahead with your point, please, quickly. Hello. I said my name is Ina Kissel. Do do you have that? Uh, Ma'am, what is your point? What is your point, please? Quickly. I told you I would like to speak to the... To You're the talking to the host, ma'am. I'm not the call screener. You know what? Thank you for the call. We got to keep the nuts away, guys. I'm sorry. I am absolutely sorry. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, more of your calls. We see them coming in. 646-720-0635. This is Dominic Carter. This episode is brought to you by LifeLock. With Cybersecurity Awareness Month winding down, LifeLock wants to remind you to update your software. These updates will patch up security issues that identity thieves can exploit to gain access to your personal info. For comprehensive identity theft protection, there's LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to more uses of your personal info and fixes issues that arise. Protect your identity today with a 30-day free trial at LifeLock.com slash podcast. They don't call her confiscation Kamala for nothing. Don't take it from us. And I support a mandatory buyback program. A mandatory buyback program? That means the government forcing you to turn in your firearms. To what lengths would Kamala go? Well, she doesn't even support the individual right to own a firearm. I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. We get it. Sometimes it's tough to understand what she's talking about. But on the Second Amendment and your rights, confiscation Kamala has been crystal clear. Her gun control agenda comes straight from that petri dish of bad ideas that is California. She can claim to be a gun owner all she wants, but we all know she's the same anti-gun California radical she's always been. Don't be left defenseless. Defeat confiscation Kamala. Vote Trump like your life depends on it, because it does. NRA Political Victory Fund paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidates committee. NRAPVF.org. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. Trump's own Secretary of Defense 
agrees with. Of staff, a four-star general, John Kelly said he's the most flawed human being he'd ever met. And today it's been reported that Donald Trump said, I need the kind of generals that Hitler had. Don't be the frog in the boiling water and think this is okay. As a 24-year veteran of our military, that makes me sick as hell. And of course, Governor Walls of Minnesota, that's exactly why you guys are losing this election and the Democrats are going to lose this presidential race. That's exactly why what you just said. Let's go back to your live telephone calls. Carolyn, Brooklyn, New York, what's on your mind? Line six, Carolyn, what's going on? Hello, Dominic. I just want to tell you, you know, like Kamala Harris is a foolish woman. And I think Barack Obama is also a foolish man. To even put this woman up to be president, it is the most ridiculous thing I've ever saw. When asked about her, Putin said she has a nice laugh. Don't you think that Putin and all the rest of these uh, world leaders know her by now? Of course he was being sarcastic, Carolyn. He was basically calling her an idiot without calling her, Putin, that is, without calling her an idiot. But that's what I'm trying to say. How can a person put this woman up for president when she can't even explain herself? Everything Donald Trump talks about, like taking, you know, like they have the coins out in Las Vegas. He's not going to give taxes. Everything Donald Trump says he's going to do, he comes up a few, a few days later and says he's going to do it. You know, Dominic, when you get a reputation of always being, you know, somebody giving you, like Judge Joe Brown said, every job she got, she got not, you know, standing up. She didn't get him standing up. I hate to say this, but this is the truth. And so you know wait, 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 Carolyn, wait, 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 Carolyn, Carolyn, we, we all know uh, the implication, what you're implying. Does that insult you as a woman? It. It, well, you're, you're saying it without saying it. Does that insult you as a woman? Exactly. You're saying Why? exactly what Why? I think. Yes. I'm curious. Why does it insult you? It doesn't insult me to have saying it. I'm just saying it. How could anybody take her seriously? You got Barack Obama backing him up. If she had Obama is wife, not really backing her, Carolyn. Just read his body language. He's not backing her. He's doing really? what he has to do. Yes. He's got to be. be he, Michelle would have been the best deal. Well, you know, you, you raise a good point. We are less than two weeks from the camp, from the election, and I still haven't seen Michelle since the convention. Where is Michelle? Michelle I think there's something going on. I don't well, know. I, I already, oh, you can, read, you can read her husband's body language. He wanted the senator from Arizona. He did not want Kamala Harris. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, and it, this is my assumption here, he knows very well that she cannot win. Carolyn, thank you for the wonderful call. Let's go to Johnny Sullivan County, New York, line four. Johnny, what's on your mind? Hey, Dominic, how you been, buddy? Good, great to speak to you again. Um, you know, it, it just never ends. The same repeated nonsense just before an election where these these lunatics come out from under their rock like this Kelly character and spoo this nonsense that that if this happened so long ago, why is it all of a sudden coming out now? I mean, it's not even telegraphed properly where it could even pass the smell test, and yet the media which is an absolute disgrace, is all over this crap. We are nothing but a banana republic at this point, and I'm just so sick and tired of it, brother. Well, I'm glad you said at this point things can turn around. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to buy the nonsense about the Hitler stuff, and I, I, I just don't see it. And And Kamala Harris jumps on it immediately. You know why, Johnny? Because when you've got nothing, you're, you're in total desperation. You don't see Trump panicking. His team is not panicking. They're just trying to get to election day, and it really is that simple. Thank you so much for the call, Johnny. I greatly appreciate it. Let's go to Larry in Brooklyn, New York. Larry, what's on your mind? Yeah, um, Dominic, um, I just want to ask you, you. I'm sure you're aware that Professor Alan Lichtman has a sophisticated formula that he's been right since 1984. Larry, I, Larry I, I got 30 seconds to the break. I don't care uh, what he says. I don't care okay, what well, he says. What do you base your, your assuredness on? What do you base I, I, it What on? I base it on is what the polling shows. Trump is ahead in all seven states, uh, battleground states, and that's it. He wins all these battleground states. Game over. Who cares what some other guy says? Period. It is time for a break. I am coming right back.
Now, now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. I hear people saying that they will be voting for, Do- or for Kamala Harris because she is a woman. Well, guess what? I am voting for Donald Trump because I am a woman. And uh, that is former college swimmer Riley Gaines making a good case with the rest of her speech supporting Trump. I want you to listen to a few things. We see all your calls here lined up, folks. I'm going to try as to, my, to the best of my ability to get to as many of them as possible. I want you to hear a few things. One, Donald Trump Jr., who's quite articulate. This is Trump Jr. discussing the issue of migrants in one of his social media posts. Well, guess what, guys? The Harris Walls campaign is actually going on the record supporting illegal immigrant gangs that they let into our country. Think about that. Don't believe me? Just listen to Tim Walt in his own words. This is not edited. It's not a deep fake. Make sure you're sharing it. Walt says that my father's vow to deport these criminal illegals is putting the ruthless gangs at risk. These people are freaking insane. They're nuts. Watch this. I would ask them honest questions, and they asked them, why are you and J.D. Vance making up stories about people who are in this country legally, putting them at risk, spreading disgusting, untrue stories about folks in Springfield, Ohio, Aurora, Colorado? Um, that's what he's been doing. It tells you just about everything you need to know about this. These lies that they're saying, Republican officials are telling them to stop it. And then they tell lies about the Republican officials who tell them to quit telling lies. Because that's who they are. But look. Let's be honest. There are outsiders coming into communities, stealing and moving jobs away and making life harder for people living there. And they have names, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. That's who they are. That is who's going there. Remember when Nancy Pelosi defended MS-13 during my father's first term? Remember, he called them animals and she was like, no, they're not animals. They're humans. They're wonderful people. Now Waltz is doing the same thing with Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes. So now let's go to Kamala Harris at the CNN town hall in Pennsylvania. She tries to make fun, to make fun of Trump's border wall before she was fact checked by Anderson Cooper. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. (laughs) So remember, Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it. Come on. They didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came time for him to do a photo op, you know where he did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing to a bill that would earmark $650 million (laughs) to continue building that wall. I I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. And I'm going to work across the aisle to pass a comprehensive bill that deals with a broken immigration system. I think Jackson's question, part of it was to acknowledge that America has always had migration, but there needs to be a legal process for it. People have to earn it. And that's the point that I think is the most important point that can be made, which is we need a president who is grounded in common sense and practical outcomes. Like, let's just fix this thing. Let's just fix it. Why is there any ideological perspective on this? Let's just fix the problem. If, if, to fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump. To actually still go to build the wall. I'm not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was, did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. Oh, let me make sure I got this right. She just said twice. Trump. <laughs> 
She just said twice, Trump didn't do anything. So Kamala Harris, what what have you ever done? Except lock parents up for truancy in California, except lock up members of your own base on marijuana charges, and now you're upset that black men won't support you. What have you ever done? In fact, not my words, the fact checker for CNN. Gentleman's name is Daniel Dale. He's hitting at Kamala Harris for making a a couple of false and misleading claims during the town hall. One, not my words, Daniel Dale. Back to your calls in a second. He says, it is not true that Harris pledged in 2020 that she would not ban fracking as vice president. He goes on to say that during her debate against Vice President Mike Pence that year, she had only said Joe Biden will not ban fracking, not herself. He says that she was also incorrect, Daniel Dale, CNN, to incorrectly claim that Trump built 5% of the wall at the southern border, that it was more than that. And she was also false in that when she said only the rich benefited from the from the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Back to your telephone calls. We're going to get to as many as humanly possible. Danny in the Bronx, New York. Danny, what's on your mind? Line four. How you doing, Dominic? Good. Go right ahead, please. Okay. Uh, I just want to, I'm sorry to say if, uh, if uh, Harris and uh, the other jerk win this presidency, I think I'm going to move out of the country. Are you serious about that? Yeah, I'm definitely serious because this country is is bad enough right now. It's just going to get worse if those two are in charge. Well, I hear you. I'm not leaving the country, but it, but it, but it's a, a question of how bad can things get when we look at what we're dealing with right now. Danny, thank you for the call. Let's go to Newark, New Jersey, line two. Steve G., what's on your mind, Steve? Hey, Dominic, hell of a job like normal. Thank you. Not, anybody who votes for this lunatic, radical, left maniac is out of their minds. They better, all these women that are undecided and afraid of Trump and all these, they better kiss their little babies. They better kiss their sons. They better kiss their nephews because we're going to war. She's weak. She's a liar. She smirks on TV when she says about fracking. And I can tell you another thing, that Walsh, that guy, what he did in Minnesota, what he did to that city, what he's going to do to this country and all the Jews that are out there. That, that that our president, my president, Mr. Trump, sticks up for for Israel. If they, if those, if she gets in office, the Jewish that that Israel's finished, and they could blame themselves. All the Jews in this country that gonna vote for that radical nut and tell my man Teddy, wake up! What's he doing? Crack. Good night, Dominic. <laughs> Steve, thank you. Thank you for the call. Before we go to the next call, I want you to listen to this because RFK Jr. doing a good job in a speech in terms of when, you know, the claim that Trump is going to use the military against American citizens. Well, RFK Jr. is completely turning around that argument. Well, what's interesting to me is that The Biden-Harris administration has done something two weeks ago that has never been done in American history, which is to send, exactly, legal force, to send a directive to the Pentagon, changing the law to make it legal for the U.S. military to be used, to use lethal force against American citizens on American soil. Technically, now it's legal for the U.S. military, under this directive, it will become legal for the U.S. military 
to shoot and kill Americans who engage in political protests because they disagree with policies in the White House. Interesting. Back to your calls, Teddy and Yonkers. Teddy, what's on your mind? Good evening, Dom. Dom, I'd like to ask you, do you think that what Mr. Kelly, the former chief of staff under the Trump administration, first year and a half, what he said about Trump, why would he lie? So you're asking me my honest opinion. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So I could give you a million reasons why he would lie. Most notably, the number one reason why he would lie is when you're the chief of staff, as you know, Teddy, it's a very powerful position. And I guarantee you, Trump might have talked to uh, to Kelly in a way that Kelly didn't like. He felt it was demeaning and he felt that he had a, a, he had an ax to grind and he waited. OK, so let me ask you a question, Teddy. Why does this drop? 13 days, 12 days before the election. It's politics. It's politics. It goes so, both ways. So, so, so you don't it see it ways. as a, a, a very interesting coincidence. It goes both ways. The language that Trump uses about Kamala, and I don't, I don't care for her politics, but still, it is totally inappropriate. Totally. What what's inappropriate, Teddy? The language that he's ah, like what? Like what? Like what? Ah, oh, she's she's a socialist. She's a, she's the enemy within. What she says, what he says about uh, Biden and other people in the, in the in the administration. Oh, there Nancy Pelosi is an enemy within. She's an enemy within. Come on. Come on, knock it off. Okay, Teddy, stand by. Let's bring in Mike from South Carolina live with Teddy. Mike, you just heard what Teddy had to say. What's your reaction? Uh, I, I was going to call and, and acknowledge all the good callers that call your show, Dominic. So, and, uh, so you didn't hear Teddy? Because I'm short no, on time. I did. Okay, I did. so I'm what's your reaction? Hey, Mike, I'm I know what you stand for, Mike. I know what you stand for, Mike. Well, well, well you, oh, really? You know me? You, you know me? You don't know anything, dude. Oh, Mike, I, you know I what? Know you. Slow down. Slow down. You, told, you spoke already. Slow down. Okay? Uh, you uh, uh, are not one of the good callers. You're abrasive like sandpaper. You're like fingernails on a blackboard. That's what you are. Okay? So where do you come off uh, going on a rant and a rave, similar to that uh, White Plains psycho, Okay, and other all the other uh, idiotic callers. Okay, so what is your point? Why can't you be logical? Why can't you be logical? You go on a rant and a rave. Hey Mike, why you is that? Hey Mike, you're not going to intimidate me like they tried to intimidate Russ and threaten him. Okay, let me tell you something. Okay, I grew up on off the What are you talking about? What are you talking about threatening him? He's he, he's a piece of crap, dude. He takes shots at everybody. He okay? is. I agree yeah. with you on that. He is a he's a self hating Jew. Okay, but I'm a proud Jew, and I'm a, I'm a proud Zionist, proud supporter. But let me I call it both ways. Okay, I don't care for Kamala and her socialist policies. Okay, but I sure as hell don't care for a guy like Trump. Okay, who's lied and and he will have all top. Military people who condemn him, who say he's a threat, okay? And they, they know much more than you and me together, okay? So don't tell me that they don't have any credibility, Mike, okay, from South Carolina, a Gamecock. Originally, hey, dude, hey, dude, shut up for a second. Shut, oh, up. shut up. Originally from, shut up. Originally from Nassau County, New York. OK, and don't give me that crap, that syrupy nonsense that you spew on the radio. OK, so don't even go down that road. And you, you think you know me or others? OK, you don't know squat. And I'm a proud Catholic. OK, OK, well, proud guys, Catholic. well, guys, he, 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 here's here's what I know. Here's what I know. I've got to take a break. Uh, we can continue this uh, another night. Teddy and Yonkers, Mike in South Carolina. I am coming right back. This is Dominic Carter.
Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. We are back. Returning to your live telephone calls. Line four, Vincent in Brooklyn, New York. What's on your mind, Vincent? Uh, uh, Dominic, uh, I'm bilingual, and last night I saw a, uh, a press review of all the morning papers and all of the, the national Italian newspapers, even the two Vatican newspapers, unilaterally agree with what you said, that uh, Trump is gaining on Kamala Harris and uh, that the Democrats now have buyer's remorse about Bush and Biden out, basically. And the two Vatican papers, they didn't even mention the fact that she uh, dissed the Catholic Church by uh, not appearing at the uh, the Al Smith dinner. They were really, they didn't even mention anything, at least not on the front page. But all the papers uh, are in line with what you're saying, that they, they, that the people here have by his remorse, the Democrats, meaning Obama, Axelrod, the, uh, the, the people in charge, that she was a bad decision, that they should have left Biden in there, and that she's going to lose. They're all well, saying it. Well, Vincent, newsflash, I could have told Democrats from day one, whatever you do, don't go with Kamala Harris. Thank you for the wonderful call. Vincent just brought up a good point. So... Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett, of course, the billionaire, businessman, investor, revealing that he will not endorse Kamala Harris or Trump ahead of the 2024 election. Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest people, had backed Democrats in three of the last four presidential elections. That's not it. That's not all. The L.A. Times, Los Angeles Times, the op-ed chief stepping down because they already had an endorsement ready to go endorsing Kamala Harris. And the owner of the newspaper said, we're not endorsing. And so they generally go with the Democrats. They had an endorsement ready for Kamala Harris. The owner says, no, you don't. End of story. Russell, line two in North Carolina. Russell, what's on your mind? Hey, Dominic. Hey, look, I'm in a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm in a county with, uh, that voted 62% for Biden in 2020. And uh, the main street I turned out onto here to take my son to school, there's Trump signs everywhere. And I drive all over the county and I'm seeing a lot of Trump signs. And I mean, for a place that went, you know, 62% for Biden, it's looking good. I mean, I think it's looking really good. And uh, we could actually be the deciding state based on the way the polling's going. This is going to be the, the tightest state for Trump. And so in in North Carolina, and I understand, Russell, you're a Trump supporter, but what are you hearing uh, about race, about the two candidates uh, from people that you talk to? Well, it's, I mean, there's a lot of people like I uh, was talking with a guy I hadn't seen in a while Saturday. And um, there's there's no enthusiasm for for Harris is what it's going to come down to, I think, is not so much how many people are gung ho Trump as it's going to be how many people are just like, I'm staying home instead of, you know, had it been Biden or had they come up with the Democrats come up with a better candidate these people might have gotten, you know, gotten out there and voted. And I think, I think that's really going to be the deciding factor is that, uh, you know, I mean, yes, yes, I am very pro Trump. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's just that they're just like, I can't vote for Harris. So I'll just stay home. Right. Well, it's going to be interesting, Russell, and please keep us updated uh, as to what you're hearing in North Carolina, Chris in the Catskills line eight. What's on your mind, Chris? And it's got to be Good quick. Morning, you got thirty seconds. Good morning, Go Dominic. Ahead. So uh, Dana Bash said that she did a focus group. I fell asleep during the town hall of okay. Kamala Harris. She said that uh, she interviewed undecided voters, and they said that they felt that Kamala Harris didn't seal the deal. I mean, I'm writing somebody in, but. Uh, you know, Democratic Party uh, should have chosen a better candidate like Sherrod Brown, in my opinion. He wouldn't um, have had a chance in hell. Close. He wouldn't have had a chance in hell. But thank you. Thank you for the call, Chris. 
very few Democrats would be able to compete against Trump. The handwriting is on the wall. I'll be back 3 to 4 p.m. and 23 hours from now. Folks, have a great day.